Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. If you are interested in skincare, which I know is the vast majority of people watching this channel, you know, you know the importance of a good evening cleanse, especially if you wear makeup and the way a good double cleanse can really help ensure that all of that makeup is off your face. You know, but maybe you've just come out from a night out, you went out out, you know, and the best you can do is grab a makeup wipe and remove some makeup fine, or you sleep one night with your makeup on. Really, it's not the end of the world. Once every so often is not a big deal, but if you do this for a prolonged period of time, we know this can do things like speed up aging, it can make you break out more. I've even seen doctors online say that it can cause DNA mutation and increase free radical damage, destroy collagen, elastin. But in some very extreme cases, and by some I mean one that we know of, this can actually make you go blind. So usually in these videos I do something with my skin or hair or whatever, but my skin is literally just asking for a week off, so I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna talk through this video. So let's just get on with it. Let's head over to Sydney, Australia and give Teresa Lynch a little visit, shall we? Back in 2018, the 50 year old mother of two, Teresa Lynch almost went blind for not removing her makeup for over 25 years. And by makeup, we mean more specifically her mascara. She never removed her mascara for 25 years, but continued to use it and reapply it. You already know. You already know something bad is gonna happen. Well, unsurprisingly, Teresa started to experience some really, really bad eye irritation. And she had this constant feeling of something like being in her eye. You know when you get an eyelash and you have to spend ages trying to get it off your eye? She felt this constant irritation, this scratching at her eye. Her eyes started to swell, they started to itch, and eventually she actually started to get discharge coming out of her eyes. They swelled up and she described her eyelids as being heavy. Not just like sleeping like, oh, my eyelids feel heavy, but heavy in the sense that they were dry and she couldn't keep her eyes open. So she tried a few over-the-counter drops to try and help cleanse out her eyes, I guess, but of course, nothing really worked, nothing really helped, the discharge didn't stop. In fact, if anything, her eyes just got worse. She eventually visited a doctor who couldn't quite figure out what was going on, so referred her to, and I have to read this word, ophthalmic surgeon, Dr. Dana Robay, an eye specialist who specifically has skills in surgery around the eyes and treating eyes. So she's taking a look, right? She's like having a look what could be going on with her eyes, looking in them, around them. And during this thorough inspection of Teresa's eyes, Dr. Robay said out loud, Oh my God, in my whole career, I have never seen anything like this. And what she discovered was actually truly horrifying. Like this makes my skin crawl. She discovered hard black bumps under Teresa's eyelids, loads of them loads of them. It actually looks like spreaded mold. Like, you know, when you leave a coffee in your room for two weeks and you forget it was there. But this wasn't mold. What this was, was solidified mascara. Solidified bits of mascara that had made their way from their eyelashes under her eyelids that embedded themselves under her eyelid. Some of it was so deeply embedded because where she just kept applying mascara and not washing it away, the mascara was just piling up and piling up and piling up and getting deeper into her eyelids. Teresa desperately needed surgery before this pretty much made her go blind, before it made anything any worse. Dr. Abay actually mentioned that every time she blinked, I was gonna say blunked, every time she blinked, these solidified embedded bits of mascara would be scratching at her eyeballs every time she blinked. Dr. Abay actually said it's like somebody throwing sand for Dr. Obey actually said it's like somebody throwing a handful of sand into your eyes. That constant irritation. We blink roughly 14,000 to 19,000 times a day. That's almost 19,000 times that these mascara bits, this mascara scrub, was scrubbing at Teresa's eyeballs. Robe said that if one of those pieces of scrubby mascara embedded in her eyelid caused a real bad tear in her eyeballs and then that got infected. That could have caused Teresa to lose her vision. Teresa went straight into having vision saving surgery. They managed to clear out the vast majority of her eyelid as you can see from the picture. It still looks like there's a little bit going on 
but obviously so much better than what it was before. But as Rebe stated, she's never seen anything like this before. She actually managed to write a whole paper on this, but goes on to say that not many women are treating the removal of their mascara seriously. You must be meticulous. She says, this was an amazing case. I've never seen anything like it, but this is a risk not many people are aware of. She goes on to stress the importance of removing your makeup every time you wear it, especially makeup around the eyes. My personal favorite way to ensure anything is off your face is with a good oil cleanse. Oil cleansers just tend to break everything down um, super easy without the need to scrub, especially if you're wearing waterproof mascara, right? So we've seen some evidence of what never removing your makeup can do to your eyes, but I wanna see what it does to your skin because there's that myth, isn't there, that for every night you don't remove your makeup, it ages you by two years. I'm not sure how true that is. I think it's like a mother's tale, you know? So I did some research. By research, I mean, I Googled a few things. I found an experiment held by Anna Persglove, a journalist for the day Daily Mail. So well, let's use the term experiment very lightly. <laughs> is the Daily Mail after all. But she held an interesting and quite fun experiment where, well, fun for us, not for her, where she slept in her makeup for a month. Ooh. This was after a recent survey showed that most women sleep in their makeup at least two times a week, despite knowing that it can be bad for your skin. Anna actually makes a great point in her article for the Daily Mail saying that for her, when it comes to whether she's gonna remove her makeup properly or not at night, it completely depends on her nightly schedule. After care for her kids, making sure they've eaten, gone to bed, her cat, <laughs> you know, being a mum, basically being a mum. For a lot of people having those, even just five minutes to do a thorough cleanse of your makeup, is such a luxury. So she decided to do this experiment to see what harm can really be done by seeping in her makeup. Is there any harm done or is it just fear mongering for basic people to sell us cleansers? So in order to measure the changes in her skin properly, she went to 3D Cosmetic Image Studio to see Nick Made Sinowski Sinclair. He basically used a machine that would map out everything on her skin, everything from pore size, fine lines, wrinkles, broken capillaries, redness, as well as moisture and hydration levels. Then what the machine does is compares her skin to other women of the same age, which her age was 40 at the time. Then her skin is kind of given a general overall score. They never told us what the score was. So her experiment begins. Now she is allowed to wash her face, but she's only allowed to rinse her face with water in the morning. Evening, she can't do anything. She can then dry her face and reapply her makeup. Evening, she can't do anything. She has to go to bed with whatever condition her face is in. And right from the beginning, the experiment sounds like it's a nightmare. It sounds horrific. First morning she wakes up after wearing a full face of makeup to bed. She wakes up with clumpy mascara, dry skin, and one of her eyes is actually quite itchy. She does say by day two, however, that it's actually her pillow that suffered more than her skin. However, by day three, and only day three, out of a whole month long experiment, she started to develop tiny white cysts around her eyes. Her skin was flaky and her friends was telling her she looked tired. There's nothing worse than people telling you you look tired when you already feel like shit. Around day 10, Anna woke up to a swollen eye, a very puffy swollen eye. She actually had a friend who was an optician who had a look at her eyes and basically said, you've just got a single eyelash in there that's smothered in mascara, that's irritating her eyes. They took it out and her eye was okay. But by the end of the experiment, once a month was up, her lips were cracking and bleeding, her pores were huge, her eyelids were red and painful. So once the month is up, it's time to go back to the 3D cameraman, as well as dermatologist, Dr. Stephanie Williams, to help explain the results. So her results, after a month of sleeping in makeup, her skin texture was 10% worse on the right side and 20% worse on the left. This is probably because she's sleeping sleeps on her left hand side and a drop of 5% in skin moisture and hydration. According to Dr. Stephanie Williams, the makeup wasn't allowing her skin to function normally. As we know, it created this layer and not in a nice way. Her skin cells weren't shedding properly. She was getting dry, dehydrated because of this. Obviously flaky and her skin became very, very red. Her pores had become 5% larger, mainly due to them being so clogged up so clogged up, but also this whole experiment has sped up the aging process of her skin. Overall, coming to the conclusion that her skin had aged by almost a decade during this experiment. Not that she physically looked old, but the condition of her skin had aged by almost 10 years. But she was fine, she had lots of treatments after this, and the dermatologist did actually say, with good care and the correct treatments, within four weeks you're not going to see any repercussions from this experiment. So she had the help, luckily. That doesn't mean you can sneakily not remove makeup a few nights out of the week, 
week, it's still recommended that you do so. If you don't have the luxury to double cleanse at night or spend that long doing it, micellar water, some cotton pads, keep them by your bed, a little hand mirror as well. Give your face a few wipes for waterproof makeup, press it onto your eye, leave it there for a bit, then wipe away. Do that as many times as it takes to remove the makeup. It's still better than doing nothing still effective. Makeup wipes if you really want to. Right, so can you believe I have a lawsuit here? Well, articles about a lawsuit because I couldn't actually find this lawsuit. This lawsuit is actually from someone who wanted to sleep in their makeup and was annoyed that the product she bought didn't live up to the standard that it said it did. And it actually kind of makes sense, I'm not gonna lie. So let's head over to New York and visit Rory Weisberg. Now, bear with me, but Rory was on the lookout for a long lasting foundation. She actually wanted her foundation to last 24 hours. And she stumbled across Lancome's Taint Idol Ultra 24 Hour Foundation. So perfect, right? A perfect match, that's what she wants. But you may be thinking, why on earth, why on earth does she need her foundation to last 24 hours? I think we all presume that when someone says their makeup lasts for 24 hours, it doesn't necessarily mean you want it to stay on for 24 hours. It just means that you know you're gonna get good wear out of it throughout the, you know, like eight to 10 hours that you're out there in public. It's like 48 hour deodorant. You're not not gonna wash for 48 hours, but you just want to know you've got the security there of not smelling after eight, you know? Well, Rory Weisberg, in my opinion, had a pretty good reason why she wanted her foundation to stay put for that long. Rory is an orthodox Jew and her son's bar mitzvah was coming up. However, however, this occasion fell on a Saturday and orthodox Jews who abide by Jewish law are not allowed to apply makeup from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. And there are certain creative activities and work that can't be performed throughout this time, and that includes makeup. I'm glad they see that as something creative. So Rory needed a foundation that would last from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. All through the day on Saturday for her son's bar mitzvah, which makes sense to me, it makes sense to me, but it didn't go as planned. Articles about the lawsuit states that she was not impressed with the formulation of this product. In fact, it didn't last that long at all. It had zero lasting power and there's no way she can sleep in it and wake up and carry on throughout the day. Basically, it didn't last 24 hours. So she's basically saying because of the brand's false advertising, she can't look good but also abide by her religion's law. Lancome claimed that the foundation gives divine perfection and lasting all day. It adds, our first 24 hour liquid foundation gives you an even flawless looking complexion, no need for touch ups. With a blendable fresh texture and a smooth finish, this long lasting foundation provides the perfect coverage. So as I mentioned, I couldn't find the lawsuit. It seems to be ongoing and kept pretty private, but what the articles has said was that she's suing for an undisclosed amount for basically false advertising, as we mentioned, on behalf of herself and everyone who had bought the foundation, as well as deceptive acts and practices, as well as a corrective advertising campaign. As far as I'm aware, the advertising campaign hasn't changed. It's either still ongoing or she lost, but a spokesperson for L'Oreal, Lancome's parent company, said that Lancome strongly believes that this lawsuit has no merit and stands proudly behind their products, and that they will strenuously contest these allegations in court. First of all, I have a lot of respect for Rory Weisberg. To do a makeup run and trial way ahead of her son's bar mitzvah, she wants to look good, but she also wants to abide by her religion's law. I think that's highly commendable and respectable. But does any Anyone truly believe, truly believe that they can sleep in makeup and you're gonna wake up and it, it looks exactly the same? I personally don't think so. As I mentioned, we don't really expect these products to last that long. What I think is is more of an emphasis of how long it could last if you were just standing still and not doing anything. And kind of more so how it interacts with the oils and like um, moisture oil balance of your face, right? Water oil balance in your face, I presume. So more so than, you know, you're able to do whatever you want in it and it will be flawless. However, should a brand say it lasts 24 hours, it has 24 hours of lasting power? I also don't think so. I think we have to meet somewhere in the middle where consumers use a bit more common sense and brands can use less kind of like leading advertising, you know? Luckily for Rory, there are brands that actually specialize in the particular type of makeup she needs, especially made for Orthodox Jews, that they can still use and abide by their laws. It's called Shane D Cosmetics. They sell powders and primers and blushes, all sorts of things. But I just thought that was interesting because we are all like, wash it all off, you know, take everything off that you can. But in this particular story and in this particular case, that need for an actual long lasting 24 hour makeup makes so much sense to me. And I'm glad that our 
are already brands and uh, companies that cater for this type of makeup. I don't know much about makeup, so there might be loads anyway, but you know, there's a natural kind of finish, long lasting makeup, so I'm glad that exists. But there we go. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of When Beauty Turns Ugly. Let me know and be honest in the comments down below. Do you remove your makeup properly every night? And if you do, what do you use? What's your favorite thing to use? Let me know in the comments. You can check out the whole playlist here, the When Beauty Turns Ugly playlist here, some general light entertainment here, and I will see you over there.